Oh, hello. Okay, so uh, yes, I'm Richard Brown, the uh, Linux distribution engineer working on Cubic at SUSE, and Alex is, can introduce himself. Hi, my name is, Hi, my name is Alexander Herzig. I'm the release manager for uh, SUSE Container as a Service Platform. Yeah, and we're presenting. Um, well, yeah, we're presenting how we work together. So the, the open SUSE Cubic, what is open SUSE Cubic, and how that relates to SUSE's cast product, and, and yeah, sort of how, how we're collaborating together from the sort of SUSE and open SUSE side of things. Um, but just, just before we start all of that, I wanted to kind of give a little bit of a picture painting history lessons uh, sort of thing. And, and you know, why? what is this whole containerized world? Where are things going? What are things looking like? Why, why are we doing this? Why are we here? Um, and, and you know, lately I, I've, I've been getting more and more into retro computing and thinking actually you know, about my first computer, which was a Commodore 64. And you know, and back then, you know, a computer was was completely disconnected from the world, sitting in your home, plugging into a TV, and you know, you're just happily hacking away on this one disconnected device. Um, but you know, if you think of the world today of the computing you're actually using in your hand, of sort of end user computing. You know, everything, you know, you've got this massive sort of plurality of different devices, you know, smartwatches, phones, our computers on the desk, our computers on our laptops, our mobile stuff. And, and everything here is all interconnected in some way, um, you know, probably talking to some server somewhere in some data center, maybe more than one server, actually more than three servers, in fact, so many servers that in the end we just stop talking about servers and start calling it a cloud. But you know, it's you know, it's still ultimately a whole bunch of servers, and this fact of computing, you know, that now sort of the general consumption point of computing is some is really you know, you have some end user device, and really a lot of the work is being done by some other thing in some back end somewhere means the world is actually a very very different place, and everything is way more interconnected, and that means everything is way more complicated. You know, and that you see that not just reflected in sort of the very sort of tangible sort of network servers, racks and clouds and that kind of thing, but even down to our software. The software we're writing these days more and more has a million different modules talking to a million different things, and that and just breeds complexity and confusion and you know difficulties with maintaining them and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you know the general trend is is you know towards turning everything into a module. You know every you know software is trying to get more and more modularized, more and more you know, containerized and de dealt in a way of a smaller, easier, more manageable unit of consumption. So it's easier to figure out how to maintain it. It's easier for a developer to ship that software and have it reused in different ways or have it used interchangeably. So basically trying to turn computing into a collection of Lego bricks. And this isn't just to try and solve the, the complexity problem or the interconnection problem, um, but, but also a case of, of operating at scale. You know, the, the, the world has got bigger. You know, more people are using all of this stuff. More people want to use all of this stuff. You want to have services that can scale up and scale down depending on the amount of users you have or the amount of users that might be using this today or might not be using it tomorrow. And when you then start thinking about our old computers, our Commodore 64s, our, our, ser our personal servers sitting in a rack somewhere, we used to treat our servers like they were pets. We would give them a name. You know, my servers were all named after Jedi Knights from Star Wars, um, Star Wars films. You know, and we lovingly look after them and we patch them carefully and we, we micromanage all of the configuration. But that doesn't work when you're doing all of this stuff at that kind of scale. When you have so many servers that, you know, you don't have enough Jedi Knights left to name them all, um, and you can't SSH into each one and f individually figure out, you know, how you're going to configure that ETC file on that machine. You don't want to treat your servers like pets anymore. You don't want to treat your machines like pets anymore. You want to, to look at it f much more like cattle. You know, just number them, put a tag on them, use them. You know, if they end up causing you problems, you know, kill them and eat them. Um, and, you know, just move on and, and have this constant sort of farm of computers doing your work for you. 
so you can move faster, so you can use this new software faster and faster, and, and, and so you can deal with this world that we're now in. Not just from a community perspective, which I'll be talking about more lately, but everything I just talked about here applies equally true in the business world. You know, Sousa's business, Sousa's business customers are trying to move in this world, wanting to use, you know, use technology faster and you know, at higher scale, at higher pace of change. And on that, and therefore, you know, the case becomes, you know, how, you know, how does Sousa as a corporate company have a platform that kind of, yeah, addresses these concerns? And this is why I hand over to Alex to talk about uh, Casp. So, thank you. There you go. Uh, let me check. Does it work that way? Down. Down. One more. No. Down. Down. There we go. Here we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, what I brought um, to this speech is um, I brought down Suzukas platform um, and divided it into layers. Um, I will go through them now one by one um, and yeah, just introduce you which layers we have here so you get a better understanding of what um, Cast platform is looking like, but this also applies for Cubic um, with some other namings here and there, obviously. Um, so the first thing we have here is we have an infra infrastructure layer. Um, so even the cloud has some kind of infrastructure that needs to run on. So, so the Cast platform is capable of uh, running on physical servers. So if you have some bare metal in your in your storage, um, you can get it out and uh, install it plain there. You can also run it on your desktop machines if they are powerful enough. Um, or also what, what, a, what, a, what a decent idea is if you have some um, small factor PCs which you can easily or conveniently stack on your, uh, on your desktop and you can run a, a physical cluster on your desktop if you have some small machines. Um, Raspberry Pi is not yet enabled, but this would also be a, another option once we start supporting um, the ARM architecture. Then, of course, um, we support at uh, CASP uh, a couple of hypervisors. So um, we have VMware images out there. Um, we have images for Hyper-V, um, also for KVM and Xen. I just realized the clouds are broken. Yeah, but yeah. The clouds broken? VMware. OpenStack and Open stack. AWS. Exactly. So we are running the classical hypervisors. We are running um, on OpenStack. So if you have an OpenStack instance, you can scale out. And we do a lot of testing also on OpenStack because it's pretty convenient. Um, then there is, um, we're supporting um, public clouds like AWS um, and in future also Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Engine. So you will find our images there soon. Um, yeah, and then there is, there used to be an operating system, um, which in our case is uh, SUSE's micro OS. It's a uh, on purpose or for purpose built um, SUSE Linux enterprise based at the moment, slash 12 SP3 based. Um, Operating system, we call it micro OS. Don't get confused a bit by the name. It's not called micro, does not aim at being small, although we're trying to be small because you're running maybe hundreds of distance. But this um, aims for the name of microservice OS. So we're microservice oriented here, which is um, one of the use cases for having CASP. Yeah. So it can run all of those different modules in all those different containers. Yeah. So having, having a bundled operating system in your, uh, in your CASP stack means that you're able to install it wherever you want. Um, you can configure it. Um, we have in transactional updates, we have, a, we have a talk about, or we heard a talk about already from Ignatz. Um, tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Sorry, I was on the wrong video. Sorry. Um, you were hear more about transactional updates, which is a really neat feature, especially for, uh, for cluster computing, because you have um, zero downtime for doing updates um, and transaction updates also um, moves out into the SUSE world so it is applicable on, on Leap and on Tumbleweed. It's I talk available. about that more later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you're able uh, with um, the operating system um, 
to debug. Um, we have a, a toolchain module now enabled where you can debug a lot of stuff. And um, also you're able to uh, install third party tools like monitoring or whatever it is, uh, is needed for your purpose. Then on top of that, there is running some kind of container execution or container engine. Um, at the moment, we are running um, the Docker engine as the first container engine. And in the next version, there will be a tech, re a tech preview um, that we um, offer the possibility to run Cryo as, as a container engine if you're, for whatever reason, um, would like to or prefer it over Docker. Um, yeah, um, with that you'll get access to the uh, SUSE registry, which uh, we roll out uh, pretty soon. So you'll find um, signed containers in there. Um, so one of our other projects, um, the SUSE Cloud Application Platform, already uses the SUSE registry to ship um, their product in the SUSE registry. So you can download it only from the registry. So. Um, there's containers, so containers are usually said to be very small, but they have containers with about six gigabytes, so this is a pretty pretty huge thing there. So that's not convenient for someone if uh, when it is goes to container because they're considered small. Yeah, and if you run a lot of containers, you want a container orchestration because you do not want to run your, or monitor your 50,000 containers on your own, so you need some kind of orchestration and the, the quasi standard or the to be standard or the most used standard is Kubernetes. Uh, who of you have has heard of Kubernetes before? Yeah, okay, almost everyone. So uh, I'm telling nothing new here, really. But yeah, let's go a bit into detail here. Um, so it consists of two parts we have a, a container scheduling, uh, which takes care that your services are almost running all the time, so who can give you 100%, but... 99 point 99.9 something. and then it becomes expensive. Um, um, it provides you fault tolerance um, and high availability, so Kubernetes uh, takes care that your container always runs, if you, can, if you define it um, that way. And make sure that the service is available as you have defined it before. Um, on the other side, there is container management, which gives you control over your containers. You can define um, in which environment your containers are about to run, how much resources your containers should get, where it could run. So if you have a hybrid cluster consisting of uh, bare metal and virtualized, uh, virtualized environments, you can define where to run it. Um, if you have some heavy duty um, services, you can define that they should only run on uh, bare metal if you desire or if your setup is like that. Yeah, and then there's another SUSE specific thing. Um, that's your cluster management. Um, and there we have Vellum, which we develop in-house. And Vellum is a UI for your purposes where you can bootstrap your cluster, where you're going to monitor your cluster. Here you can set up, you can see the health state of your uh, nodes. You monitor while bootstrapping which nodes are good, which is, uh, you can see um, the update status here. Um, but Vellum doesn't care about the containers themselves. Vel exactly, so that's why I said here it's cluster management, not container management. It uh, takes care of the nodes you register for your system and you can control them here. You can add nodes to it, you can remove nodes to it, uh, you can update nodes, you can um, define the, up the update policy you want to apply to your cluster. Then there's an optional layer if you need that. Um, you can install an application ecosystem like SUSE uh, Cloud Application Platform that abstracts your applications even more. Um, if you're interested, um, go on our website and look for Cloud Application Platform to know more about that. But this, this is an abstraction layer when you do not want to handle each and every container on your own, you can uh, use SUSE Cloud Application Platform, which is based on the Cloud Foundry project. And last but not least, um, SUSE Cast Platform is designed to run cloud, application, uh, cloud native applications, 
So you have a very special way of how a cloud application should run. Um, did I write it here? Yeah, so it should be operational, observable, elastic, and resilient. And, I didn't, and of course, agile. Yeah, that buzzword does not, may not, <laughs> must be said, so like that. And yeah, with that, back to you, Richard. Okay, thank you. Here you go. Yeah, so I mean, I mean the kind of the, the brief story of Cubic, because it's a very, very young project, you know, only started last year, um, you know, actually at OSC last year, really, it, um, is, is, you know, OpenSUSE, you know, both inside SUSE and outside, you know, has kind of taken a look at what SUSE is doing with this, this cast model, looking at these layers and, and trying to, to use these technologies in an enterprise sense and, and kind of really looking at, at what, um, you know, what are the applications and, and more of a, a broader community sense. So, yeah, like I say, started a year ago. It's a sub-project in the OpenSUSE project, so yet another under that big umbrella that we have these days. And it's focused on all of these different container technologies. You know, the, most of them that you mentioned in the stack there, but also sort of broadening out a little bit as well. And we've now become the, the upstream for, for CASP uh, and the CASP program. So really, I mean, we're kind of like, you know, the, the Martian explorers of this whole container world side of things. Um, it, it's obviously similar, you know, coming from the same basic ideas, but already in a year, you know, things have grown quite different, um, and that's really quite an exciting thing. So, you know, we're independent from CASP, like everything in OpenSUSE, independent from SUSE, and we're basing all of the work we're doing inside OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. I'll go into more details about that later. Um, and, you know, more and more, we're targeting the latest upstream container technologies. So, uh, for example, you know, we ha there is Vellum, and Vellum is, is contributed to as part of, of the Cubic project. But in addition to that, we're looking at, at CubeADM, which in the last year has kind of flooded onto the scene. And that's really becoming the sort of upstream cluster bootstrapper um, for, for most Kubernetes clusters. Um, and uh, there's some really cool stuff that, that only Vellum can do that CubeADM can't. And there's some really cool stuff that only CubeADM can do that, that Vellum can't right now. So we're kind of looking at that and, and playing with that. Um, a lot of the stuff with, with CRIO and, and Podman is happening inside the, the, the cubic space. Um, we have transactional updates and all of the development we're doing there, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, and yes, we've since starting Cubic, we've completely and utterly re-engineered the installation routine, so it, it's a million times more customizable than what the poor customers of Casp are using. So we can prototype new stuff and play around, and yeah, generally have uh, yeah have a lot more options in there. So in an, in a nutshell, though, you know, what are we really looking at? Is pretty much anything our community wants to look at in this container space. So, for example, Paul has, has his talk on Sunday in the, the hall next door um, yeah, at that time. Um, and that's an example of this. Yeah, exactly. There's Paul. He's the one. Paul. That, you know, and, and he's, he's been experimenting with some stuff on Cubic. He'll be talk, talking about that. Um, in fact, I don't think you're using Kubernetes at all. So it's like a perfect example of the, the kind of crazier and more interesting stuff. Um, yeah, so please come to his talk. I'm going to focus a little bit um, on... Uh, the transactional update stuff, although Alex already talked quite a fair bit about it, and you know, with all of this, with all of this highly orchestrated, broad, you know, having clusters of machines running all of your services, looking after all of this stuff, this old sys admin maxim is more true than ever. You know, if you've got a cluster of nodes, even if it's five nodes, but if it's like five nodes on two different clouds or whatever crazy arrangement you might have for running your clusters, you never want to touch that running system. You know, it's just more work than it's worth half the time. But at the same time, you've still got to be secure and still got to be patched and still got to deal with those issues. Um, so for that, we have transactional updates in Cubic. It's an update that is, is, is totally atomic. It happens in a, in a single operation. You know, either it totally applies and the system totally changes to the new version of the operating system, or nothing at all happens, no software is changed, no libraries are changed, everything is just left exactly as it was. Um, and as part of that, none of those changes happening while the system is actually running. Because, you know, your services are up, your things are running, you don't want to risk anything, you don't want to swap things around. Um, and doing that properly in a single transaction and with the technologies we're using, um, mean also, we also want it to be totally and easily to roll back. So, you know, you do make a change, it all happens in one easy, swift move. And then when you test it or you then run it and you realize it doesn't quite work the way you want it to, you can throw that update away and immediately get back to running the system exactly how it was before you changed anything. 
And yeah, so transactional updates were originally designed as part of microOS on the, on the Casp side of things. It's really become like the core feature inside both Cubic and Casp. It's the def the, I definitely, at the moment, think it's the most exciting thing we're working on. And as you saw in the Leap 15 announcement today, this feature is also available as a transactional server mode in Leap 15 and Tumbleweed. So you can have a Leap 15 machine using this as its update mechanism. Just pick the, in the uh, in transactional server system or when you're installing it. But I won't go into any more details because Ignaz, who's over there, raise your hand, wave, yep. He's in this room tomorrow going into more detail about that. So you can see how that all works and, and how to use it and have fun with it. So yeah, with this different view on things with, with OpenSUSE, sorry? No, nope, oops, sorry. thought you said something. But yeah, um, yeah. With this, with this, this slightly different view on things, and, and yeah, looking in slightly different things from from what Casp is doing, and you know, how do we actually work together? Well, the story of of Cubic and Casp working together isn't really that different from the, the story of OpenSUSE and and SUSE working together. You know, Tumbleweed is the 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 star SUSE factory. Whatever. You know, if it's SUSE or OpenSUSE, it doesn't matter. We're all building on the same code base. You know, and Tumbleweed is there as our nice, stable, always working, always tested, always usable code base. It's the base system for all SLE versions, and it's the uh, even changes for service packs are going to uh, going to to factory first, which is the process we call factory first, um, which is yeah a, a key part of all SUSE Linux enterprise development. You know, all development now follows the factory first policy. Almost everything ends up complying with that policy. There's always some exceptions, um, especially in service packs, obviously. You know, Tumbleweed moves so far that not all changes make sense to, you know, and, you know, some libraries need backporting and that kind of thing, but the, the intention is definitely still there. And the main benefit this brings both SUSE and OpenSUSE from the, the SUSE side of things, you know, it makes features a heck of a lot easier to get into SLE. You know, it makes, in fact, the transactional update feature being one example of that. Um, it makes it easier for SUSE's partners and the community to contribute into, into the SLE code base. It makes that all more stable, which means yeah, all nice and more stable, more usable for everybody, which in turn makes everything nicer, more stable, and more usable for everybody who's using OpenSUSE Leap, because you know, that's where it also ends up afterwards. To display this sort of diagrammatically, it looks something like this. You know, Everything from, well, everything that SUSE cares about for SLE comes from Tumbleweed um, when they start a new SLE code base. And when they're working on a new SLE service pack, everything they possibly can take from Tumbleweed you know, comes from, from there. With CASP, it's pretty much the same idea. But we have this thing called Cubic. So in essence, you know, Cubic is this uh, is a, you know this sub project. We're focusing on this container stuff. From a code base perspective, though, every Cubic and Tumbleweed are, are pretty much interchangeable. It's the same repositories. It's the same code base. It's the same project in OBS. It's a different installation media and it's a different installation routine because you know we're focusing just on this container side of things. So you know it's a, it's really just a. a a derivative distribution um, of Tumbleweed. But all of the code is the same, and to change something in Cubic, you change something in Tumbleweed. Um, in the same kind of, mostly the same kind of sense, yeah, SUSE Cast platform is a derivative of SLE, of a, of SLE service packs. Um, so if SUSE want to change something inside CASP, they can change that in that SLE service pack. Or if the software in question doesn't come from that SLE service pack, then they pull it from Cubic. So all the con kind of container -y stuff that doesn't exist in general SLE is generally being pulled you know, from Cubic the factory way. So to do that diagrammatically, you end up with something like this. So, yeah, Tumbleweed feeds into SLE, SLE feeds into CASP, and Tumbleweed and Cubic, yeah, all sharing the same code base, but the Cubic bits that are interesting for, for CASP end up in there. Um, so to, yeah, kind of put that sort of sim really a little bit too simply, you know, all OpenSUSE development starts in Tumbleweed, all SLE development starts in Tumbleweed. Um, yeah, SLE is based on Tumbleweed. Cubic is based on Tumbleweed. Um, Tumbleweed kind of the heart of all of this. Um, and yeah, if, if you really want to work with, with Casp, you know, you're working with Tumbleweed and SLE is a derivative of, the, of both of those two things together. 
So if I've interested you enough that you want to start contributing to this and changing what we're doing and having, yeah, uh, seeing what we're doing, we could do with more people testing it. We have, our, we have our ISOs, they're working quite nicely, but you know, we're testing them only in OpenQA right now. There's you know, more manual testing is always useful. Um, so you can just go to the, the regular Tumbleweed download page. There is a cubic option there. You can install it on bare metals. You can install it on VMs. The installation routine, like I say, is nice and changed and, and simplified. So in fact, it, it walks you through the, the system roles far, in far more detail than, uh, than another, any other OpenSUSE distribution does. And when you find bugs, because I'm sure you will, um, you know, you file them in Bugzilla in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed as part of the, the, the Cubic component, if you think they're Cubic specific. Um, generally speaking, a lot of the bugs you know, are shared between Tumbleweed and Cubic, so if you file a Tumbleweed bug, we'll fix them there too. Obviously, though, in this whole kind of agile, containery, cloudy world, a lot of people don't want to handle messing around with installing installation media. Um, so we are working on VM and cloud images. Um, that is the URL for the OBS project where they are right now. Um, the develop project is there. In fact, there is a, a factory project for them as well. Um, but we, Cubic, the Cubic team, when we started looking at this, suddenly realized Tumbleweed doesn't have any VM images. And in fact, the Tumbleweed release process doesn't have any way of releasing VM images yet. Um, so that's something we're actively working on with the Tumbleweed team at the moment of figuring out, okay, you know, we can build them now. How do we test them? How do we do them as part of the standard Tumbleweed release process? So when there's a new Tumbleweed snapshot, we're not just publishing a new ISO and a new, new repo, but we also publish a whole bunch of, of uh, VM images for that as well as, as part of the whole thing. Um, we're using for that kind of effort, we're using the factory mailing list and we're mainly using the factory IRC channel. Um, and we also have our, our own cubic IRC channel as well. If you're a packager, packaging or interested in packaging, anything called of containery, um, we have the, the, the I really want to change the name because, you know, obviously it comes from CASP because they started first. But um, yeah, the Devel CASP uh, uh, controller node uh, Devel project where yeah, most of the cubic specific stuff is being incubated. It's a standard Devel project following the same rules and processes that we generally have in uh, OBS for, for Tumbleweed. Um, we could really do with some help with, with packaging, especially the more interesting new fast moving upstream stuff. Um, things like the latest cryo and podman and the, the whole kind of project atomic build tooling has a lot of very interesting stuff. And we do have versions in there, but you know, they're moving quickly. There's different ways of doing things. So please feel free to contribute. On the Vellum side of things, even though we're looking at KubeADM, we still wanted to, to actually help with Vellum, and I'm looking forward to the day where Vellum is, is a key part of, of the, the Cubic standard cluster. We, all that development is being done in, in, in Git. Uh, Vellum is mostly a Ruby application, but there's sort of two components with, with, uh, with Vellum. You've got the sort of the front end and the kind of a lot of the logic happening in Ruby. But the execution of changes to your cluster, the kind of orchestration of, of bootstrapping the cluster, um, it's all actually done using salt. Um, and the, the repo name is a little bit incongruous. It's not quite true. It's not, a, it's not another copy of salt, the binary that runs the salt stack. Um, the salt repo in the cubic project actually has all of our salt states, all of our configuration for salt. Um, and that's where we have all of the, the salt scripts and the salt profiles where we're defining you know, how to change something on a Kubernetes cluster, how to bootstrap the cluster, what to do when, how, etc. cetera. Um, and that's something we could definitely do with a lot of help with, not just updating for you know, the pace of stuff in Tumbleweed, but those modules are incredibly useful for people who might be interested in, in just using them bare for running like their own Kubernetes cluster, you know, separate from using the, the more broad tools. There's a lot of very useful knowledge there for like starting up a Kubernetes cluster, moving your, moving the initial containers around and getting the base level done. Um, but right now it's all very much focused on, on the, the CASP stuff and we want to kind of make it more usable and more, more flexible for, for dealing with the faster stuff. So please feel free to go there. It's GitHub issues, pull requests. It's all, all open and, and very, very, very nice to use. And almost last, 
um, yeah, we have the uh, the Cubic website itself. So there we have kind of a summary of everything I've talked about here. Um, but also we're trying to turn it into sort of a very active sort of blog slash community for it showcasing what is happening in the Cubic world of things. So that's where you can read all the latest stuff about the transactional update features in 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 Leap and, and Tumbleweed, where you can read about the stuff we're doing with Podman. And if you're doing anything interesting in OpenSUSE in the container kind of side of things, we're interested in taking that blog post and putting it on there. Um, it's very easy to contribute to articles because it's just a bunch of markdown in a Git repo. Um, so please, yeah, send us a pull request. And uh, yes, last but no means least, anything else. It's an open project. We're keen to see what, you know, this is a very fast moving area of, of IT of the world. So, you know, if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see inside Cubic, please get in touch. We have our mailing list. We have the Cubic IRC channel. Please join us. And to start with that, I guess, does anybody have any questions, comments? Yes, Sergio. Yeah, sorry. I think, I think this one might be charged up enough so we can both. Uh, it is about these Cubic images, because uh, if Cubic is the platform to run the containers, I don't understand what are these cubic images. Are there the end applications that will be run as in the containers on cubic, or are images of the cubic itself to run something else? Yeah. So the good question. Yeah. So the the it, they would be the VM images for your your cubic cluster for your cubic platform. So the, so the you know the the OS bit. Um, it, fair to mention actually, and I just realised I've totally neglected to mention the stuff we're doing um, on the container side itself. So yeah, um, uh, if you indulge me for a second, in addition to all of this um, in the cubic team, we have people now working on the base containers for OpenSUSE and SUSE distributions. So for example, the official tumbleweed container in the Docker Hub, you know, is being done as sort of part of the Cubic project. And that's, you know, if you now and same with Leap, um, which I think is also being upgraded to Leap 15 today already. So you can do your Docker pull from the yeah, from the hub from that registry and get, you know, a proper built properly, tested properly, open SUSE style, open SUSE quality container image. Um, and one thing we're working with, but we're not quite there yet. Um, it's kind of a, it's a big collaborative thing. Um, the OBS team have a bunch of features going into the open SUSE build service. Um, and there is now a website you can already go to, registry.opensuse.org. And that is an official container registry for the open SUSE project. And it basically reflects every single container built in every single project in every single part of the OBS. So anybody with a home project in the OBS, putting a Kiwi file there and building their own container can get that. You can get that container from registry to OpenSUSE.org. It's all signed, rotaried, done properly because, you know, the hub, Docker hub doesn't do that right. Um, ultimately, long term, that almost certainly will be the official place to get all of the containers for running things like Vellum and Kubernetes on a Kubit cluster. Um, it's just a case of, of not really being there yet. So we're doing the, you know, we've got the ISO images and stuff done, V images next, and that release process part of, of Tumbleweed, which we haven't figured out. The container images will be the, the step right after that. And that will probably answer it at the same time, but just, yeah, priorities. Cool, next question. Thanks, Alex. Uh, what architectures they, do you support with Cubic? Only Intel or? At the moment, only x86-64 Intel. Um, I have absolutely no problem with talking about doing any other um, architecture. So in my home project in OBS, there's a little sub-project called Cubic underscore RPI. And it works, kind of. Um, most of the issues that are actually stopping it working aren't issues with the cubic base or with ARM in OpenSUSE. Most of the issues are things like Kubernetes, where like a cube ADM bootstrapping is like has a million different timeouts, and there's no way a Raspberry Pi can do anything that quickly. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a case of dealing with upstream to make it more ARM friendly. Um, so yeah, definitely that's. In the kind of everything else category, this is one thing I would love to see people help push us along because I kind of like the idea. Next question. Yeah, 
Thanos. There you go. It's not a question, it's just um, a comment that I would like also to highlight what R Richard said is that Cubic is a new project and basically we can shape it based on the community needs. So just to give you an example that this is true, uh, a couple of uh, months ago, um, I was looking in the rootless containers and what we do there in OpenSUSE. And um, now we have the test in OpenQA, so uh, we are really proud of that because uh, the Cubic it might, might, might be only the f only distribution out there that makes sure that uh, rootless containers and uh, uh, OCI, Open Containers Initiative uh, style of standardized containers are working for us. So there will never be broken there in that case. So if you have any use cases, bring them forth and they can be a reality. Thank you. Cool. If there's nothing else, then uh, thank you very much.